Welcome back to Code Corner. In this episode, we are getting into 2020 NEC, Article 70621, Directory, Identification of Power Sources. Uh, okay, uh, we're gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read some code. Uh, ESS shall be indicated by markings or labels that shall be in accordance with 110.21b. Facilities with utility services and ESS, so that's gonna be everything with a backup power situation happening. Um, plaques or directories shall be installed in accordance with 705, which is interconnection of power sources and 712, which is actually DC microgrids. B, facilities with standalone systems. So either way, whether you're a standalone system or you're interactive with other utility sources, with other power sources, excuse me, um, plaques or directories shall be installed. And in this case with 710, when they're relating it back to a standalone system, because that's the section of the code that's all about um, basically island power, okay? And standalone systems. And we'll talk about that in a future code corner. So we wanted to give you an example and, and, and remind you, what's the purpose of this directory, okay? This directory uh, is essential to people such as first responders, again, who need to be able to easily and quickly assess um, and identify that there's an energy storage system on site. Not only is there an energy storage system on site, there's a PV system on site. And both might not be obvious when you step foot onto the property. If that PV array is up on the roof, you may or may not be able to see it from your vantage point. And if that ESS is in the garage and the garage is closed, there's a really good chance you're gonna have no idea that there's energy storage on site. And so that directory is key. And it's key to be clear and easy to assess, like, where am I? Where is the energy storage system? So if I need to like, you know, if your house is on fire or if there's something else going on at your house, you want the first responders to know where your energy storage system is located quickly um, and that there's a PP system on site as well. So make a map, you know, have a layout of the house. We make these in our plan sets all the time for labels and you point out where everything's located. This is a great example. Uh, first of all, we're saying, hey, there's a source on here. It's a PV system and an energy storage system, not just the utility power, okay? Mul multiple sources of power, caution, okay? That's a good thing for people to note stepping on site because keep in mind, we go and we design these systems and we install these systems, but the people that are gonna be there when your house is on fire may have no training, no idea about other power sources, um, no idea that that stuff is on site. Okay, and so here we're show we're pointing out that there's energy, there's an energy storage system in the side of the garage. Okay, with that label and an arrow. We're also pointing out the disconnects on this label. That's a good idea. If we want to shut this thing down, that's where you go. Um, and we're relating it to the utility meter in case they're you know not quite sure where they are on site. It's pretty easy to usually find your utility meter. And hey, there's a solar array here too. So. The identification of power source requirement actually not only lives in 706, but you're going to see that same requirement in 690, 705, and 710. It's it's uh, you see identification of power sources, you know, seriously um, throughout the code and throughout the code sections we're most concerned with. So it's not just in 706. Um, and what were you going to say, Ryan? Oh, well, I, I was just going to point out, you said, you know, make a map. Uh, and that's just something I like to point out in other label requirements over on the PV side when I'm talking about those as well. I mean, you can see that we have some PV stuff specific here. But yeah, and to your point of the folks that are needing to use this need to act quickly and they don't need to read a, a story about where something's located. They need to see a picture and they need to be able to act quickly. Uh, and so, you know, if... In a situation like this, this is pretty straightforward. And like you said, utility meters, they're generally going to go to that location anyway. And so having it, you know, the location marked, marked uh, in reference to that. And then if you have multiple disconnects, because there are allowances sometimes for that, you know, having different labels or different maps and, you know, you are here is a is a, also a very nice one to have. So they don't have to, people don't have to think. Um, so again, if you have multiple labels, you can, we, we do that all the time as well. So. Yep. Make it easy on the folks that are trying to use it. Absolutely. I mean, and we've had some pushback uh, actually from, you know, contractors on why do you have to put this like picture label here? It's like the actual code section is called directory. 
You know, it's not just labels or uh, uh, it's they, it, it needs to give information with its in, in appearance. Okay. Sure. And so I, I almost wish they call it directory slash map, <laughs> but they don't. Thanks for joining this Code Corner. Um, we wanted to also note that we have a heat spring class series on energy storage systems. We have one class for the National Electrical Code requirements for energy storage systems. And we have another class for fire codes um, as they pertain to energy storage systems. Please contact us with any questions or comments or other um, topics you'd like to see covered in future Code Corner series um, as they relate to PV or energy storage. And our information is up on the screen. We invite you to engage with us and we hope to hear from you.